What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames, new episodes every Sunday. Hoopy dooby doo! <laughs> oh my god. This is one of those where were you type trades. Like 2016, right? Free agency opens up. Hall for Larson, Subban for Weber. And Stamco signs his extension after testing the market. It was like one of the craziest days of my childhood, pretty much. This was literally one of those trades. So let's get into it. Like, obviously, as you can tell, Noah is not here. Uh, he's out doing stuff. So I said, you know what? I'll record an instant reaction video just, you know, to get our brief thoughts on it. And then we'll dive into more detail, you know, probably tomorrow, day after, whenever we can find the time to convene. So where were you when this trade happened? I know where I was. I was in the shower. I'm out here getting my robe on, right? Because, you know, real men wear robes. And then I see Matthew Kachuk traded to Florida. And I just go, huh? Instantly, my heart sinks. I go, what in the hell is Florida going to offer up? We just got Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Weger for Matthew Kachuk on top of a prospect and a first. So, yeah, where were you? Because I was, you know, almost waterboarded myself. But, like, seriously, though, like, I am just in shock. Like, my soul left my body, and I just, like, jumped out of the tub. It was this whole thing. And I'm sitting here like, okay, well, then what's the return? Like, oh, my God. Like, I'm texting my buddy Noah. I'm like, well, Lundell has to be part of it, right? Like, that's where my head was at, right? Me like, too. Was, that's where I went to. Exactly. Yeah. Lundell. That's what I wanted. Yeah. And I look at, and I see Huberto, Uyghur, a first and a prospect. I was like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts on this? Because, like, this is crazy to me. Yeah, well, honestly, like, um, we didn't realize that it had gone, the trade had gone through until we saw, like, all of our phones, because we're, backstory, we're all at John's wedding, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're chilling at John's wedding, and all of our phones just start blowing up, which obviously means Slack is blowing up, right? So our group chat's just going nuts. We're like, okay, something has happened. So pull up the phone, see the trades, just utter shock, right? Because, yeah. I mean, did you even know that Huberto was a candidate to get traded? Like, I don't know. No, right? Like he wasn't even in any discussions, let alone rumors for this. Like, no, he wasn't on the block, period. Yeah. Like nobody even speculated that he'd get moved. So the fact that he got moved is number one, crazy. Like dude had 15, 115 points, just like Gaudreau, right? Yeah. They basically replaced Gaudreau point for point in this deal, yeah, which is literally insane. Like who could have predicted that happening? It's nothing short of a miracle that they were able to get that done. Well, there were only two other players in the NHL <laughs> that could have gotten traded. That would have been Gaudreau point for point. And one of them is McDavid, obviously yeah. not getting traded. The other is Huberto, which we all thought, you know, obviously not getting traded. But man, I I honestly can't even, I haven't seen the footage of us reacting to it yet. <laughs> um, but I can, I can vividly recall just an absolute, just shocking feeling that we all yeah. share. Like, I, I honestly, I can't even, I can't put into words how surprising that return was. We we wrote about this, right? We We wrote about how, they're definitely losing the trade. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, didn't they, see a way they where this we up. win this. No. Yeah. Like, anytime you're trading a player of, like, an Eichel or a Kachuk, usually the player that's getting dealt is the best player in the deal. 100%. Like, yeah. that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think that Kachuk or Huberto is the best player? Because I personally think that Kachuk is the best player in the deal, but I don't know. If, like, we're talking about maybe the Flames winning this. From a definite loss to a maybe win, like that's a huge win, right? Yeah, I mean, to me, I think it, it it's very it's a very ballsy trade for most because of the risk it entails. Like Huberto and Uyghur are both unrestricted free agents next summer. I can't imagine Brad pulling the trigger on this deal without getting a remote sense that he could lock up Huberto and Uyghur long term. Yeah, I, I think it's one of two things. One, either what you just said, right? He, he's he got his finger on the pulse. He knows that he can reside one or both, right? And he's he's got it. He's got a plan. The other thing is maybe he doesn't, but he knows that they're both valued at probably a similar haul that they got for Kachuk. So mm -hmm. if you get from now until 
you know, end of August, end of September, even, and you know you're, that they're not signing here, flip them, right? You can get a first for both of those players. Oh yeah, you totally could. And more and more. So I think he's put himself in a really good spot. You know, if, if they both stay and, and extend here, great. Like the window extends and we contend for a cup again, but yeah, if not, I mean, there's more options too. So I really hope it's what you said though. Like, I really hope that tree living has, has an idea of these extensions, right? Cause that would, that would really put this over the top. Yeah. Like that's to me, that's really the deciding factor of the whole trade, right? Like if, if you can find a way for both these guys to stick, like that's like, I just, I, after the last 14 days of PTSD, I can't imagine him not doing his homework there. You know what I mean? I mean, but we've been surprised before, so it is what it is, but yeah, like Uyghur alone, I don't think people understand just how big of an impact like Mackenzie Uyghur is like, he improves our decor by a freaking mile. Like he's an elite two-way D-man. This guy is one yeah. of the most underrated defensemen in the entire NHL. He's Devon Taves. I don't know if I can say that because I haven't looked <laughs> into the numbers, but uh, as a pure, just what I know about him right now, I think that makes some sense. I don't know. I mean, like just his analytical card is just like the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Like he's, his wins above replacement. It's a 97, even strength offense, 97, even strength defense, 95, right? Yeah, this is from like, Jay Fresh you're talking? Yeah, 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 Jay Fresh. PK finishing, like, in like in zone offense, zone entries, entry defense, zone exits, rush offense, D-zone retrievals, all of it is top-notch. It's ridiculous. Like, this guy is literally an analytical darling. I mean, he was on the – not even on the radar. He's, he was really in consideration for making Canada's Olympic team. Right. Mm -hmm. With that Uyghur Ekblad pairing. Mm -hmm. um, like he, he was almost a Canadian Olympian, which is, that's very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. um, the one thing that I, Uyghur might be the best piece in the deal, which is crazy considering Jonathan Huberto was part of the deal. Right. Yeah. I mean, when you look at last year, Chris Tanev going out absolutely derailed the team defense, oh, right? Yeah. We had, we, we were watching this team put up unreal team defense. Top six was solid, but after that, it was a massive, massive jump back. Michael Stone, you know what? Credit where credit is due. He did a good job. God He's no Chris him, Tanev, man. right? He's no Chris Tanev and yeah. he did great. And like hats off to Michael Stone, hundred percent, like respect to Michael Stone. But now that you've added Uyghur, you've basically added Rasmus Anderson's offense and Chris Tanev's defense and the same player. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's nuts to me. You know, like this, this defense yeah. core is, has to rival the best in the league now, doesn't it? it yeah, it, it, it should. And I mean like this, this decor under Daryl Sutter, come on, like mm -hmm. inject this into my veins, like wholeheartedly. Like this is insane. Yeah. All, all I know is that I need a Jersey number for Huberto so I can go to my Jersey as soon as possible. That's I hope it's awesome. number 13, but that's oh my just God. Me. I think it's, oh. what do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be 10. The fact that we were able to replace Johnny Goudreau with literally Johnny Goudreau in a sense, put like a bigger Johnny Goudreau who actually kills penalties too. Like, yep. like that's insane. I, I how do I don't like, know what to say. I refreshed Twitter like eight times, pinching myself. Like, this isn't real, right? Like, Friedman's like playing with me right now. There's no way that Huberto is part of this deal. It looked like it was uh, from a fake account, right? <laughs> it looked like a tweet that was put out by a fake account just to get us riled up. So when I first saw it, I, I kind of said, you know, this can't be real. And no, open up the tweet, blue check mark. Everything is there. It happened. I, what do you even say? Like, I... Hats off to Brad for living, man. I, I don't know how he managed to pull this out. You know, it was interesting, though, in his media availability today. Mm -hmm. He said that this package from Florida was by far the best package that they got and worked on. Which makes me think that, you know, if you like a player, Florida clearly likes Matthew Kachuk. Good for them for making it happen. I don't know. I, I, when I look at the Florida Panthers now, I don't think they're a better team. Zito transformed them into a contender and then blew it in the span of five months, really. When you think oh, who did they lose, right? They so lost like, now Huberto and Uyghur, Giroux, yeah. Sherratt. Who else? Like, basically three first-round picks. Huberto, yeah. Uyghur, uh, two prospects, Tippett and Schwint now. 
Yeah, Tippett and Schwint, yeah. Uh, a third and a fourth for two months of Claude Giroux, like two months of Ben Schrott, and now Matthew Kachuk. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. you, you didn't make your team better. With the Flames, this yeah. is a gamble. Because if they can get Huberto and Uyghur extended, oh, my God. Like, that's – Inject all of that into my veins, please. That's like fine, yeah. the one thing, the one thing I do, I want to ask you this because I was thinking about it today. You know, I, two camps going into this whole fiasco, right? People mm-hmm. wanted to tank and go for Bedard, but I don't know. I feel like the team was too good to do that with Markstrom in the back, Daryl Sutter, you know, at the helm. They still had some really good pieces. Like Lindholm's an extremely good hockey player. Man might not score 35 again, but my God, he will definitely flirt with 30. Um, they've got some really good pieces. The Pacific isn't unreal yet. They're not finishing with a lottery chance next year, even without yeah. this trade, right? Say they lose Kachuk, they get, you know, garbage return like we all expected. They're not getting Connor Bedard. I don't think that they're going to be in a spot to actually legitimately tank. So for me, I feel like, you know, a lot of fans are like, oh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, which is true. But this is definitely better in my eyes than tanking. What do you think? Oh, I, I think so too, because I feel like a lot of the people wishing for young guns to come back and hyping up young guns 2.0 clearly yeah. didn't do the research on young guns 1.0. Um, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. Like it, it's just to me, I mean, hell, like the flames almost relocated <laughs> like that's how bad it was yeah I, I don't think that we're in the same timeline though right like i, I yeah. personally would have liked to see it but if you're gonna do it you got to do it right you can't tank with jacob markstrom and daryl sutter i'm and sorry think, they're gonna yeah. win too many games on their own mm-hmm. and i mean like even just looking at a lot of the value deals that are still on our books like Lindholm, hannafin tanev and you could say like you could ch- probably find a taker for those deals pretty easily and maximize your, you know, future assets. But at the end of the day, like as long as Daryl Sutter is here, there's no way that this club or organization is going to go that direction. I agree. And the fact that you're able to add Huberto and Uyghur to it, like premium, like players in their respective fields, like that's insane. Our G core next year, We've been lacking a guy like Mackenzie Weger on our decor for the last few years now. Like this is it's a one in a kind type of ball game with that guy. He's insane. If you can get both Huberto and Weger extended long term, not only do we win this deal at face value, but I think I think you straight up commit highway robbery if Huberto and Weger both sign extensions, but that's just where I'm at. You know what? You'll look at the two biggest things that Brad Schilling has done in his tenure as the flame. And you know what? He's, he's got some things that he's really good at. He's got some things that he's not as good at, but we got to give credit where credit is due. He pulled out two blockbuster trades, one in 2015. I mean, you can count both Dougie Hamilton trades. I think is being, I think both. Yeah. You know what? All three trades, both Dougie trades and this trade, Man, it's masterclass. It is a work of art it's, for living, the way that he's done this. It's insane. Like, just give a quick rundown. Jonathan Huberto, Mackenzie Weger, Cole Schwint, and a conditional 2025 first-round pick for Matthew Kachuk and a conditional 2025. There you go. That's insane. His back is against the wall. The fan base is at a new level of low. Like, yep. And he just comes in, and he, it's the first – sign and trade in nhl in history. history right like, like that's insane taking a page out of the nba book here <laughs> i think this is gonna it's precedent setting i think it is precedent setting that that eighth year especially with how the current cba goes i mean when when this one expires and we get a new one I, i'm anticipating there being lots of changes um but for the foreseeable future here sign and trades is it going to become a thing probably i feel like that's yeah, I, wave now with I, Players having the leverage that they do and the ability to make their own, you know, decisions on where they end up. It's like, I feel like that has to be something that's implemented down the line. I agree. I agree. Um, And I mean, I was the biggest Matthew Kachuk guy, like since his draft day, he was my favorite flame in terms of like sentimental value, like Kipper level value (laughs) to to me, because I came in and I saw this kid come in and I was like, like I was in the 10th grade. I just finished the 10th grade when he got drafted. And I just sat there and I was like, 
this kid is a stud. Like, what the hell? Like, I can't believe he fell into our laps, right? And you know what? All the power to him for being straight up being honest with the organization, just saying, I don't see a future here. And you know what? If the hall was any worse, I feel like I'd have more hard feelings. But because the hall is what it is, I'm going to just say I really appreciated watching Matthew Kachuk here for six years. That's where I'm at. You know what? I, I think that he – honestly, I agree with you. My favorite flame since, I would say, Aginla, like he, he was a true treat to watch almost every single night. The way that he – the way that he just, the way he played was so unique. And he's going to do the same in Florida. Florida fans are going to absolutely fall in love with him. Yeah. And everybody <laughs> in that Atlantic division is going to absolutely hate him. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be really cool to see. I mean, it sucks to lose him. It truly does. I, it's, it's a huge loss for the team. You know, a lot of teams, a lot of people were saying, you know, he's the heartbeat of the team, future captain material, all of that. At the end of the day, he, that's not something that he wanted, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah, I think it does suck to lose him. It's, it's a, uh, it's a bummer. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to not see him wearing a Flames jersey with that A on his chest too, right? Yeah. So end of an era for sure. But yeah, uh, thanks to for how he handled it. Honestly, I think that it was real classy of him to, you know, be up front, say, hey, you know what, we're gonna, this is what we're thinking. Let's try and make the most out of this for both sides, and I don't want to leave you high and dry. And I really respect that. Could- yeah. And the fact that, you know, it happened in the fashion it did with a sign and trade, that's like both sides maximize their value. I don't know how it's insane. Like it's, oh, I just need the Huberto and Uyghur extensions to come in like now. And especially with, you know, contracts like Lucic, Monaghan, the fact that their big money come off the books, you know, next summer, all that sort of thing. Like, let's say you get Huberto locked up long term let's say you get Uyghur locked up long term your cap space suddenly becomes a legitimate weapon what, what's your opinion on on how they maximize because clearly they're trying to they're going for it next year right yeah they're they're making a push they saw what they did last year and they want to do it again and get better so now looking at this roster um do you still buy out Monaghan and do you add someone do you go hard for Kadri or something like that I maybe maybe that's a dead in the water we don't know right Mm-hmm. I personally have no information on that, so I can't comment on it. But yeah. what if they, what if Kadri has a change of heart and say, oh, you know what? I could, I could dig playing next to Jonathan Huberto. I think with Kadri, it depends on the money and term that you're dishing out. There are other names that also intrigue me on the market, like Sonny Milano, for example. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I think like, has Evan Rodriguez found a suitor? Is he signed or is he still a free? Uh, he is not. No, Evan Rodriguez is not signed. Yeah, because I think that like he's another pretty underrated depth guy. Like he's a pretty good guy for your middle six. Um, I agree. Yeah, right shot I center. Feel, too. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just in complete shock about talking about this deal. Like it hasn't even settled in yet in my brain. I know. This is what's happened. Yeah. Like. Like, I don't know about you, but I think having a French Canadian star is like the new face of the franchise. That's pretty sick. Like the That's last. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Last, I feel like the last guy I want to say like star star would be what like Guy Chouinard when I was like t- minus twenty years old. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't remember that, but like in recent yeah. memory, I want to say like the last high profile French Canadian we've had is Alex Tange. Yeah, like, I was gonna say it's probably Tange, mm-hmm. and that's it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's just, it, it's yeah. so, it's so cool. Like we have like, Oh, just my goodness. And again, we talked about there being a condition uh, on the picks with the trade. Yeah. If Florida's 2025 pick is top three, the flames send their fourth rounder in 2026 and receive their 2026 first rounder. Yeah. The picks are linked. So whatever yeah. pick they get, the fourth round in that same year will go to Florida, mm. whether it's 2025 or 2026 or whatever. Right. And then also this Cole Schwint guy who doesn't seem like a, like a throw in by any means. I mean, obviously he's the lowest value asset coming back, but still he could play legitimately play. I mean, half a point per game in the A isn't really something to discourage, especially at his age. 
And the fact that he's a oh. former third rounder, I right? 2019 third round pick. 2019 I, third round pick. He yeah. was a rookie in the A last year, 40 points, 19 goals. I think he was sixth in U21 AHLers in goals behind guys that actually, this is interesting because it's behind, I think it was JJ Paterka, Jack Quinn, Jacob Peltier, Lucas Reichel, um, one of the guys in there, but it, he's in a, he's in a field of players who are expected to score goals, right? Cole yeah. Schwint is a two way center. He's not going out there and trying to light it up every night as the main primary score of his team. Right. The fact mm-hmm. that he was sixth in the AHL in U 21 forwards and goals is pretty cool. That's yeah. not, uh, yeah, that's not anything you should, you know, bat an eye at. Like that's, that's pretty, it's pretty exciting. If Huberto and Uyghur sign extensions, it's like the equivalent of a highway robbery to me because that's insane. Like, I don't know how, oh my God. I can't believe Jonathan Huberto is a flame, man. This is insane. That's... <laughs> like, so I had... I Huberto, like... He's, uh, he won the Memorial Cup with the St. John Sea Dogs, right? So he's now, so he, him, Jeremy Poirier, Jan Kuznetsov, mm-hmm. all St. John Sea Dogs that won the Memorial Cup that are part of the, like, how is Jonathan Huberto a flame? I, I still can't yeah. understand it. I don't, it doesn't, like, it's not sinking in. Yeah. It's like the Hannafin Lindholm deal when it happened four years ago. I was like, okay, going to welcome in these two young players that were both drafted yeah. very high and just hope for the best. They turn out to be, Elias Lindholm's a freaking animal. And yeah. no, yeah. Hannafin yeah. is one of the most serviceable top four guys I've ever seen. He finished fifth in heart voting, right? Yeah. Gaudreau was fourth, uh, Hubert was fifth. Like you, oh my God. Like it's been, it's nothing short of a miracle that this guy's in our city. Um, It's it's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, like literally I'm at the point now where I'm like, whatever you want, take it. If it means you being in Calgary for the rest of your career. Yeah. We may have an old building taxes suck, but your French Canadian face will be the new face of the franchise. What, what else do you want? Do you want the key to the city? We can get Backlund to give you his number. Like I, <laughs> at this point, like whatever you need to stay, like just, oh, it's like I, I'm shocked, man. This is, I'm going to be honest. I, I think that it's going to be, I know like Calgary's taken, like as Brad Trilby said, a lot of body shots the last mm-hmm. few weeks here, but Calgary's an unreal city. And this team is, we keep hearing how unbelievable this team is, how close they are, how great of a group of guys this is. Nikita Zadorov could have signed anywhere he wanted for probably more money. He got he's getting paid less than Eric and Branson. Yeah. And he chose to come back to Calgary because he sees not only a good future for the team here, but for himself. He specifically said, No, I grew a lot. I learned a lot. Daryl Sutter helped me evolve and grow as a player that's why i want to come back here and we've unfinished business right that's what he said this is not a team to write uh to write off jonathan huberto is going to like this team now if he's got other plans you know he's got other plans but i don't think that it's going to be him coming in saying all right i'm just gonna wait it out kind of thing no Hmm. they've already tried to make him feel as included as possible he's gonna get pulled in and he's gonna love it i i'm just waiting for the friedman tweet talking about an extension that's 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 where i'm at because i can't go another year of just waiting waiting on my hands and knees waiting for some sort of certainty and then just being uncertain for a full calendar year and then you think it's gonna happen though like do you think that brad Schilling would let that happen i don't think so this is why i think i think i would hope organization learn like the organization learned from the gaudreau debacle i really hope that they learn that Thing is with the, I think that Brad Schilling has been pretty subtly digging at Gaudreau and Gross, especially today. Like I think that there's some real frustration on his end, yeah. where he expected the negotiations with the Gaudreau to go a certain way, and the fact that they fell apart in the eleventh hour, I think that really upset him. Mm-hmm. And again, he said again, you know, it's it's players' choice yeah. to go yeah. if they want to go. That's fine. That is their right. But. I think there is a certain level of courtesy and professionalism yep. when you're negotiating things like this that Kachuk clearly showed. And I don't know if Gaudreau did. And mm-hmm. I think that that is kind of, that's never going to leave Brad Living now, right? He, he knows like, okay, maybe I can't take the word of the agent 
on a whim and just say, okay, if they're saying that it'll work out, it'll work out. No, we need it. We need an answer. We need to adhere to our deadlines. We need to know up front. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I just, I feel like that lesson has been learned and he learned it the hard way. That mistake can't be made again. Yeah, it can't. And I'm, and it won't, it, it'll be such a bit huge distraction heading into the year. If he's not extended, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's one of those things where you just look and you're like, okay, like, not again. Like we just went through this. Like, um, man, I, the one thing I have with Huberto is just, I am going to be super excited to see what kind of monstrosity Daryl implements into his defensive game and making it better because we saw what he did with guys like Gaudreau. Gaudreau was not a slouch defensively in a Daryl Sutter system. Oh, he was a he was very good. He was excellent yeah. defensively. And you strengthen your decor. You add Huberto. You still have got roughly nine million dollars in cap. Yeah. Do you see the Flames adding anyone big? I don't. You know why? I, I just Manj and Shillington are probably going to take up eight of that nine. But you know what that means? They've got another million and a half, give or take. And I know the cap, cap friendly says it's nine right now, but I think it's a little bit more because they're showing, I believe, 10 defensemen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, like, I, I can't see Gilbert playing the NHL. Like he's going to get, he's going to put on waivers. Um, he's going to play in the A. If he gets called up, great. Nick Malosh, um, I, I kind of did pencil him in as an NHLer, but now I'm not sure. Maybe he does fill in that Michael Stone role. Mm -hmm. um, but again, possibly a guy that doesn't play in the NHL right away mm -hmm. uh, and gets called up. But I think they have room to make some, you know, low risk, medium reward, high reward plays. Like you mentioned, Sonny Milano is out there, right? I think that's the type of player that they're going to add. I can't see them going after someone big unless they can get Kadri to come here. Then I would suspect a Monaghan buyout or a Lucic trade to facilitate it because they don't have the space otherwise. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> I, it's still not sinking in. We've been sitting talking for like, what, 20 minutes? And I just still not, it's just yeah. not sinking in. This is absolutely nuts that we were able to get freaking Jonathan Huberto, a top pairing caliber defenseman, a pretty solid prospect, and a first round pick for Matthew yeah. Chuck. What a haul. Hooby dooby doo, I guess. That's how we're going to end this podcast. Because, wow. Welcome to Calgary, Jonathan Huberto. Welcome to Calgary, Mackenzie Weger. Please sign long term, you beautiful studs. And thank you for listening. Anything else you want to add, Kareem? I think you nailed it. All righty. So that was our instant reaction to this trade. Stay tuned for more stuff along the way. And uh, thanks for joining me, Kareem. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This was good. Alrighty. Thank you for listening, everyone.